Hey everyone, my name is Nick Sulo. I'm an artist with a background in visual effects, working for the film and TV industry for the past decade. I'm also the co-creator of Exulo, that's known for creating the techno dystopia surreal artworks. So in today's video, I want to show you all how to create a tune outline to give that illustrative look inside the 3D software. Today we're going to be using the V-Ray tune within Maya. So let's go ahead and jump in and check that out. All right, so now that we're in Maya, we're going to go ahead and start applying the V-Ray tune. But before we jump into that, let's go ahead and check out uh, V-Ray's Chaos's their breakdown explanation of what is V-Ray tune to begin with. So it says that in the overview, V-Ray tune is a very simple node that uh, produces this cartoon style uh, outline on objects in the scene. Uh, just a pretty much basic, you can see it in this. So what the V-Ray tune does is it'll um, identify the edges of each object and how they intersect even and do a basic outline around the object itself. So the more complex the object is, obviously, the more complex the V-Ray tune line will do. So let's go ahead and jump in back into Maya and we'll start with, uh, go ahead and start applying the V-Ray tune. We can go through each of the different settings in the um, the setting tab. So I created this scene. It's the uh, uh, sci-fi cityscape in that kind of a pop cyberpunk style. And what's great about this scene when using V-Ray Tune is that there's a lot of objects uh, happening in the foreground and in the background and even in the midground. A lot of detail in here that we can actually see how the V-Ray Tune like interacts with these different objects and using depth scaling like thicker line work uh, that will happen closer to the camera and then thinner, phasier line work will happen further back in the background. So we can really see and play around with the settings, see how the V-Ray tune really plays with this uh, setup right here. So what we want to first do when enabling the V-Ray tune is go up to uh, the Create tab and scroll down to V-Ray and it's V-Ray tune. So go ahead and select that. And then the tab opens up in the attribute box. And sometimes um, if you accidentally select another object in the scene, the attribute box will disappear. And you're like sitting there wondering, OK, I was about to play around with the V-Ray tune. What happened to it? How do I get it back? I want to I want to go back into these settings. So what you need to make sure to do is in the outliner under display, it's unchecked EAG objects only. You can scroll down to hidden, and it's right there, V-Ray Tune. So make sure to have that unchecked to be able to go back into the attribute, into the V-Ray Tune, and play around with these settings. So just a quick note. So yeah, obviously with the basic parameters, we can look at the V-Ray Tune, check it off. It turns off the V-Ray Tune, so it's pretty obvious. So another thing I want to check out is the line color, so you know, can uh, pump it up to more of a gray. So uh, the gray isn't really true to the color of the line work here. It's more kind of like an off blue. And that has to do with the compensate for camera ex uh, exposure. And if we check that on, it will actually mimic the actual color of this line color that we're selecting. So we can even go crank it up to like a nice blue. So if you want an actual co colored line work, you can really play around with that. Make sure to have this checked to actually get this exact color that you're looking for. But for usually by default, I like to keep it to black. So bring it down back to black. Let's go ahead and just uncheck compensate camera exposure. Brings it back to how it was. Other pretty self-explanatory taps in here with that opacity map. You can really crank down and just turn off the opacity of the line work. Or if you want it more faint, It'll just uh, calculate the, the opacity of the line work itself. Pretty pretty self-explanatory with that. Um, you can check out the hide inner edges. Might be a little hard to see, but say you don't want some of the line work detail within the object itself. So like say this panel right here, it's actually hiding, even these buildings, it's hiding all that line work and just uh, calculating the line work around the object itself. So obviously I like to make sure to include that, love all that kind of little line detail. So that's really great to be able to have. 
So let's go ahead and scroll down with the other settings, like the depth scaling. So one thing I want to check out before looking at depth scaling is affected objects. So um, making sure to enable this, have as inclusive set checked on. And what happens is it turns all the V-Ray line work off because we didn't select what affected objects are going to take place and uh, what objects are going to have the V-Ray tune applied to. So what we want to do ahead and click on this tab and the relationship editor will pop up and we have the tune set and say we want the tune um, V-Ray tune to only affect this main character right here. So I'll go ahead and select that. We have to do is sometimes turn off, go back to viewport 2.0 and then switch it back to the IPR. Let this render and actually see the uh, effect being taken place. What will happen is um, only the character will have the V-Ray tune applied to it. So say you want certain objects to be affected in the scene with the V-Ray tune and other objects you don't want that applied to. Um, it's also really great to have like kind of full control if you want to play around with line depth. So like say this character is selected and then you can go up and play with the line width and set that to like two. You can already see that line depth is a lot more thicker. And then um, you can even select different objects and apply the same setting to that too as well. And say, yeah, we have this character with a thicker line depth set to two. And what's pretty cool is we can go and create another V-Ray tune. And then you'll see it right here on the bottom. And then it brings up the new attribute editor and say we want this line of work to be set to one. So you can see the first V-Ray tune has the line depth of the, you know, set to two and then the newer ones set to one. So you can see actually the difference of the line depth. So thicker lines say we want to have for the main subject in the scene. So it'll be applied to him only. And then, um, you can even go in, back in here and select the objects in which we want. Say we want the bridge. Go back, viewport want 2.0, and then the uh, IPR. Go ahead and let this render. Now, yeah, we only see the V-Ray tune being applied to the bridge and then V-Ray uh, tune one being applied to the character. V-Ray tune has line depth. Again, that's set to one and then thicker line work. So you can get really customizable with what objects are being affected by which V-Ray tune setting, whether it's one or two or so on. Uh, but for this, um, since we're going to be just applying depth scaling, we don't really have to uh, go into too much detail and depth on adding a ton of different V-Ray tunes and different uh, attribute settings for those. So we can just go back to how it was previously, delete the V-Ray tune, and scroll back up. And let's say we want, uh, we can go back to having it affect everything. So I went ahead and unchecked as inclusive set, and we can go ahead and break that connection. So it's back to where it was, and now let's go ahead and check out the depth scaling. So when we go ahead and click that on, you might have to more than likely uh, adjust the minimum depth and the max depth. It's relationship between like the how close the objects are to the camera or how far they are. So let's see what it does if you set it to 500. Actually, you might have to crank it up even more to about yeah, 2,800. And you can already see that the line depth is already being applied to the objects that are closer to the camera. And the further back it goes, the line work will start to kind of fade away and become a lot more thinner. So it 
really does add more depth and dimension to the line work itself and just adds that nice extra detail because if you have your line depth set without any uh, scaling to it, it's all going to be the same um, width. So objects in the further background, they're going to appear to be a lot more bolder than they really should be. And you kind of lose a little bit of that nice detail in the object. So it's nice to be able to apply the depth scaling and really start cranking it up from 2000 to see what happens if we bring it up to 4000. You might start seeing the objects and even the further background getting filled up with line work. Let's try. Yeah, so set to t uh, 10K, you start to see some thin line work happening in these objects in the background. So to be able to apply this as a um, render element, let's go ahead and set that up. So yeah, just make sure we're under the render elements and then have tune selected and we can add that under the uh, render elements and we can also add in some other layers as well. So say we want, let's go up to diffuse, set a diffuse pass as well. And then a render ID. And then with the V-Ray tune selected, there's some extra attributes that we can check out eventually, but let's go ahead and render this. And you'll already start to see how the V-Ray tune is gonna be affecting each of the different render passes. So I usually tend to like to turn that off and I can show you that, but let's go ahead and check out the different render passes first. And we are under tune by default it will uh, have a black background and then kind of this off-white bluish uh, tone to the to the line work. So say we don't want our tune um, layer to look like this, maybe more of a white background and a black line work that we can actually kind of draw an alpha channel out of when we drop this into Photoshop. So go ahead and do is go back to the render elements, make sure you have V-Ray tune selected and under the V-Ray tune, extra V-Ray attributes, do it, go ahead as invert the colors, check out off apply color mapping and deep output. And what this will do is exactly that, turn the background to white in the outline line work to black. So as mentioned, it'll be easier when we drop this into Photoshop to be able to pull out a nice illuminance out of that. So yeah, now we have a uh, tune render element looking pretty good. This is a nice setup like that. And you can start seeing the different uh, depth scaling. So we got the thicker line work for line work in the more foreground elements. And then it starts to kind of thin out further back it goes. And then it's a little more thinner in these background objects and it starts to kind of dissipate and disappear. So you can see all these objects right here, there's because of the depth scaling set to, I think it was about 10,000, uh, there's no line work uh, in the, the far background. We can keep it like that. I think it's a good effect. And you can see each render layer has the tune, um, V-Ray tune affected and applied to it. You can render ID as a white outline. Sometimes we don't want this effect when we drop this into Photoshop because we already have the tune as its own layer. And if we're applying that black outline on top of our like RGB, which already has the line work, the line work will start getting thicker and maybe that's not the results you're looking for. So to be able to turn off the V-Ray tune effect on all the other render layers, but keep it to the tune, we can go ahead and go back into the V-Ray tune attributes. Again, that's found in the render elements. Let's make sure that's selected. Actually, no, sorry, it's the V-Ray tune. When you're on outliner, make sure to have tune render elements only and that to be checked. So when you have that applied, you can see that the uh, render element will only apply to the tune. So now you don't see the line work anymore in the 
RGB color, nor do you see it in the render ID, and you don't see it in the diffuse. So it's a good starting point when you want to start dropping this into another program like Photoshop and being able to have a little bit more organized. So, all right, that should pretty much cover uh, setting up V-Ray Tune uh, in Maya and going over the basic parameters of the line color, the line width, and even setting up depth scaling to really kind of play and fine tune your, your line work on top of your 3D render. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Make sure to keep an eye out. There's gonna be more tutorials to come on NVIDIA Studio. So definitely hit that subscribe and like button and we'll definitely see you then.